kindness. It's doing time. Joyeux Noël. It means Merry Christmas in French. There's a film called Joyeux Noël, and I think it sums up pretty well the state of the planet at the moment. In the film, it's about World War One. You know the, the phrase, in the trenches? You know, you're in the trenches, that means you're really... You're really doing the work. You're really there. You're really a part of it. You're really, it's a, it's a big deal. You know, you're not out on the fringe. You're, you're in the middle of it. You're doing the stuff. You're really getting your hands dirty. So in the film, it's Christmas Eve. And there's the Germans and the British and the French. And it's World War I and they're fighting away. And they're in, they're all in the trenches, right? They're all dug in. They've all got their fortifications and they're shooting at each other and killing each other. So on Christmas Eve, I can't remember, you will notice I haven't seen the film in a while, but it doesn't matter because the basis, the, the core message of the film has come through loud and clear, and that's what I want to get across to you today. So, in the film, one of them, I can't remember who, that would probably be interesting, but one of them, some guy goes up, has like a candle, and he's playing the violin or some instrument, and he gets up out of the trenches, and he's playing music, and he's playing Christmas music. And, you know, his buddy's like, what are you doing? You're going to get shot. And the other, you see the other side, they're like, what is he, what is he doing? What is he doing? And, they, and they're ready to shoot him, but they don't shoot him. And he plays the music. What happens next? <laughs> so one of the other sides, somebody else comes up and plays music. And then even from the enemy side, I shouldn't put enemy in quotes, they were the enemy at that time, <laughs> comes up and plays music. What's going on here? It's a war. They're in the trenches. This is supposed to be where it's at its meanest and grittiest and harshest and the reality of hatred and war and fighting. And yet here they are playing some like Christmas symphony <laughs> at night in some field in who knows what country in December. It's cold. Why don't they just kill each other and get it over with? So I am going to ruin the movie a little bit for you here, but it's okay. You should, it's absolutely worth it. I will put a link below when I find out where it is and I will definitely watch it again. And so what happens is more and more of the troops come out of the trenches and they're just talking and they're playing music and it's like a cocktail hour <laughs> in some field, you know, probably in France where the Germans and the British and the French are having a little party. And they show, you know, there's this German guy, and he's, oh, I have a photo of my wife. Yeah, come to München and drink beers with us. You are invited. Ach, once this war is over. <laughs> right? Come drink beers with me and my wife photo when the war is over. So now we're killing each other. But when we're done with that, if we survive, <laughs> come on over, have a beer. What's that all about? Aren't these guys supposed to hate each other? Where's that hatred? What's going on? The British guys are, oh, job, I'm going to have a cup of tea in London and whatever. French guy, oh, chérie, this is mon chérie. Oh, comme à Paris. Un apparatus, comme moi. <laughs> okay, you get the idea, right? So that's great, Bradley. That's really cute and all. But what's, what's happening? So these guys are in the trenches, right? And the further you go out and away from the core there, the less understanding of the others they are. So back at headquarters, they are saying, you know, how, I can't remember if headquarters knows what's going on. Can't remember. Clearly can't remember a lot about the film. But at headquarters, like, no, the Germans, they are murderers. They will put your head on a stake and, you know, go through town. But the guy on the front says, but that guy invited me to his home in Munich to have beers with his family. I, he's not a monster. They're saying he's a monster, but he's not. I know the guy. I met him. I've talked with him. I've seen pictures of his wife. What's, so what's going on here? The further we get from the trenches, the further we get from actual communication with the enemy, the further it is from reality, the further it is from what's really going on here. There's a book I just finished called 
uh, human kind, human kind, human kindness. Rutger Bregman, B R E G M A N. I'll put it a link. And it talks also about war. And it talks about how there's been studies where they show this is earlier on when they're really like hand to hand combat and the whole uh, the bayonet, bayonet and stuff. And, you know, they're really there and they can really like see the eyes of the enemy. And there have been studies where they say they shoot above them, they, uh, uh, their gun locks, they don't even shoot. Because when they see that that's another human, they don't want to kill that other human. And back to the trenches, they're having cocktails on Christmas Eve. They even joke in the film about how, okay, well, you know, well, let's get back to killing each other tomorrow morning. Should we say eight? <laughs> and then, you know, we'll, we'll finish this stuff up. And then, you know, I'll see you in Munich. We try to get there by Oktoberfest. <laughs> All right? So what's going on? These people are communicating. They are getting to know the other one as an individual human. And so, again, you have the extremes. Sure, there is later war, you know, Nazi Hitler, bad dude, right? But he's the extreme of the Germans. I have lots of German friends. They don't think Hitler's a good guy. Who thinks Hitler's a good guy? Nobody. This tiny little percentage of extremists think he's a good guy. Yet on the front, Here's a picture of my wife, come have beers in Munich. What's going on? There is a disconnect between human connection. There is no connection. The further you get away from the actual communication with other humans, the easier it is also to believe the propaganda, to believe what you read, to believe what they say about them. Yet, do they know them? What if you ask, you know, you ask the French guy, what do you think of the Germans now? He's not going to shoot them. He's going to go have a beer with them. Stop with that. Stop with that. Joyeux Noël. I could probably ruin it more for you, but I would do a terrible job. But I, I want you to get what's going on here. You know, a quick story back, you know, 9-11, I'm, I'm living in San Francisco, and my dad, living in L.A., you know, oh, 9-11, or, you know, let's bomb Afghanistan. And I, I say, believe me, I'm not <laughs> backing any terrorists. In fact, I don't back any extremists of any kind, you know, on either end of any, of any spectrum. Because you got that 0.1%. There's always going to be the fanatics and the wackos and the weirdos. And yeah, sure, lock them up and do whatever you need. But I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the 99.9% .9 of the planet who is humankind and who is going to show you a picture of their wife and say, come have a beer. That's in my Pollyanna, I admit it, I am an optimist, I am glass half full, that's just who I am, and I cannot change and I don't want to. <laughs> Joyeux Noël. Joyeux Noël. Merry Christmas. What can we do then? Who do you actually know of that other side that you think is so terrible? Do you, do you know these guys? Oh, by the way, the story with my dad. He says, oh, you know, Afghanistan. And I said, hey, dad, how many Afghanis do you actually know? How many have you had over to your house for dinner? None. Well, I know two. I mean, that's only two. I don't know how many people live in the country, but that's only two. And I, I know them, and they're... Some of the nicest guys I know. In fact, one of them could probably be in the top 10 of nicest people I've ever met in my life. He wrote a cool book. It's about kites. We were friends right about back then. He was taking a lot of heat because he was from Afghanistan, of course. Yet he was the nicest guy I've ever met. And so he was doing a book tour down in L.A. And I said, hey, Dad, go meet this guy. And my dad, oh, I don't know. And he goes and meets him. He's the friendliest, most loving guy in the world. Oh, I know your son. Oh, Mr. Charbonneau, here's my book. Ah! Oh, big pal. What's up with that? First, there's a faraway country where there are definitely some bad dudes who did some bad stuff. Hi, baby snip snip. Hi, baby snip snip. But then there's this guy who's a writer and a loving guy. Who are you going to choose? I'm not saying be friends with the terrorists. <laughs> I don't know any terrorists, by the way. But I know this guy. And he is one of them. 
And so who are you going to choose? And how are you going to make that connection? How are you going to make that judgment about those people, the type of person, when you don't know any of them? Get in the trenches. Get into the trenches. Get to know the people you don't know. Get to know the ones you, you think this way about. How many of them do you really know? Go watch the movie. Read the book, Humankind. Joyeux Noël. It's November. It's a good time, right? <laughs> I'm Bradley Chauvin. I forgot to mention this is Thursday Thunder. There is no thunder in the air. It is a gorgeous morning here. We've got autumn. We've got fall. Pepper! Okay, you think it's thunder? There's just a big boom. So I gotta go. I gotta get him. Pepper! Pepper! This is gonna freak out. Hey, it's have a great Thursday. I'm Bradley Chauvin at Thursday Thunder. I'm here every week. Pepper!